radial cleavage, as you may recall if you look through the PowerPoint on invertebrates, is typical of the deuterostomes and certain other things. <clears throat> so chordates, such as ourselves, the vertebrates and their close relatives, the sea squirts, the land slips, <clears throat> those are chordates. Also the echinoderms, starfish, sea cucumbers, sea lilies, sea urchins, things like that. <clears throat> And, you know, you've got the acorn worms in there as well. <clears throat> Most of the invertebrates, though, are protostomes with a different pattern, as we'll see in a moment. Radial cleavage, basic idea. The first several divisions of the cell, all the parts look the same. Each of those cells formed by division match. <clears throat> like you just <clears throat> radii of the sphere, <clears throat> cut it, and you get these matching cells. It's not until rather further on that you start to see differences between the cells. Here's the diagram again, amphioxus or lancelet, that's our cephalochordates, another type of chordate. And you see the cells are pretty similar. Okay, yeah, they get a little bit bigger versus smaller, but these look similar all the way around. In fact, chemically, they have not differentiated yet. If you were to take this as indeterminate, meaning that if you cut this in two, you'd get twins. <clears throat> Each cell still has the full potential. It's still totipotent. And then eventually, as the pictures here show, we go from that hollow blastula. If we're anything more complex than a sponge, one side folds in, to become an inner layer, now we have an outside and an inside cell layer, which will be very important further on for development. This folding is known as gastrulation, and so now we go from the blastula, the hollow ball, to the gastrula, the hollow ball that's got part of it folded in. This cavity in the center of the gastrula characteristically will become the digestive system. Versus radial, we have spiral cleavage, and this is again typical of the protostomes. <clears throat> spiral cleavage, by the time we get to eight cells, things are very obviously different, and it's not a straight line through the whole thing, but instead these cells are kind of going off to the side from the cell that they form from. <clears throat> That's where the spiral name comes from. And so you get kind of a spiral look to our developing embryo here. Now, <clears throat> this cell and that cell are obviously different. And indeed, this goes with determinant cleavage, meaning that if you cut this in two, you do not get twins, you get two halves which are going to die. <clears throat> Each of these cells already, or even these cells, it's already determined what part of the animal they are going to be. This cell is going to grow out of half the animal, this cell grows into the other half. So that's the determinant pattern. No twins unless you have asexual reproduction <coughs> in our ones with the determinant pattern. So again, our starting zygote, fertilized egg, divides through cleavage, grows into the the hollow ball of the blastula. In sponges, that blastula is the sponge larva and then grows into the adult sponge. But in everything more complex than that, we have the folding in of gastrulation and then <clears throat> from there, now we've got two different tissue layers that can grow into different types of things, making more complex animals, well, more complex than sponges, it's saying all that much. <clears throat> we've got two distinct layers. So this can give us something like a jellyfish, comb jelly, things of that sort. In turn, this will develop further. Often there's a larval stage, very different from the adult, and then a process of metamorphosis to become the final adult stage. Most animals add yet another layer. You have cells <coughs> that move in between the outer and inner layer 
and these are the triploblasts. Triploblasts also are characteristically bilaterian, meaning that they have a front and a back, a left and a right, as opposed to the typically round <coughs> or irregular <coughs> build of a jellyfish, a coral, a sponge, things like that. Along with this third layer, we may have a body space known as a coelom in their various patterns. For example, your flatworms characters, they do not have that space. They are acelomate, no extra space. <coughs> yeah, they've got the digestive system, but <coughs> not something else around there. You also have what's known as a pseudocelum, where you have this third cell layer, mesoderm, and then the spaces between that and the inner part, <coughs> the endoderm. Or that space can be totally surrounded by the middle cell layer, and it is known as a coelom, but that can form in more than one way, <coughs> whether it's splitting or if the middle layer forms kind of as pockets off of the inner layer. So here we have our comparison, the protostomes, including things like the mollusks, the annelids, the arthropods, again mollusks, snails, clams, squid, octopus, things like that. Annelids, that's our segmented worms, earthworms, a lot of ocean worms. Arthropods, jointed legs of so insects, crabs, <coughs> spiders, lots of things there. If there is a clear pattern to the development, it's typically spiral and cell division is determined. <coughs> Once the two cells split, each one has its own destiny as part of the animal, no twins. Deuterostomes, again, including ourselves, other vertebrates, the rest of the chordates, and the echinoderms, and a few other things, <coughs> have the radial cleavage pattern, where the cells are largely the same for quite some time, and indeterminate. Each of these cells can grow into various things. If we have a coelom in the prostomes, it's either a pseudocelum or typically a schizocelum, schizo split, where the mass of mesoderm, that middle layer, gets a hole developing inside it, splitting apart. Deuterostomes, in contrast, are characteristically intercelous, meaning that <coughs> what will become a mesoderm starts out as endoderm and then kind of pockets off buds from there, and then the coelom is formed as a space there. The name protostome and deuterostome, though, refer to <coughs> the mouth development. In our deuterostomes, that first opening that developed with gastrulation as part of our ball of cells folded inside, that becomes the anus, and the mouth is a later opening developing at the other end. Deutero means second. For example, the book of Deuteronomy is when Moses said, hey, <clears throat> you guys didn't listen the first time and we were stuck in the wilderness 40 years. I'll review the law a second time. <clears throat> Try listening this time. <clears throat> Deuteronomus, second law. Deuterostomes, second mouth. Stomo means mouth. And so the mouth is a second opening. The anus is what comes first in deuterostomes. Protostomes, first mouth, typically that initial opening formed during <coughs> the gastrulation, that folding in is what becomes the mouth, and the anus comes along later. Now, yes, in detail, things do different stuff. Also, this is not something very easy to study. <laughs> it's not all that well known for a number of groups, but that's the kind of standard pattern. So, again, we can have very rigid development, <coughs> referred to also as mosaic development, where early on chemicals are distributed to say this part's going to become this part, this part is going to develop this way, and it's fixed early on due to that. Others start out with not much difference in the cell, and you divide for a while, 
And then after that, you start kicking in the directions saying this part's going to become <coughs> a particular portion of the body and that part of these cells is going to become that part. <coughs> so starting out relatively equal. Again, you could get twins if you divide this, that's that type of thing, or even more. Armadillos characteristically have identical quadruplets, for example. <coughs> so you tend to have these two options, either later and indeterminate, or fixed from the beginning, determinate. 